Now that we've discussed how fraud happens, how data breaches happen, let's discuss what you can do to protect your organization. From a technical standpoint, cybersecurity training for both your employees and your customer is going to be the leading thing. Again, social engineering represents 93% of all breaches. Training is how we can mitigate the effects of social engineering. Let's first talk about critical asset management, knowing where the important or the critical devices are on your network making sure that we follow good remote device management, right? multi-factor authentication, employing least privilege possible. right? That's making sure that only folks who need access to those critical devices have access to those critical devices. Monitoring your sensitive data. Right? Again, employing that least privilege possible right? for that sensitive data. Have strong backups and test your backups. You don't want the first time that you test your backups to be when you unfortunately had a data breach. Having robust security policies. Gone are the days where even if you're a small one or two man shop, you don't have to have security policies. Unfortunately, we're at a time where we have to have those strong policies, especially as we see more devices in the internet of things, right? If our refrigerators, our machines, our everything is now connected to the internet and having strong policies is a way to ensure that those devices are still protected. Identity access management. This is the process of ensuring that somebody that attempts to sign into your network actually is that person that's signing into your network. Right? So that could include utilizing biometrics. It could uh, include utilizing multi-factor authentication. Remote device management. That's managing those devices that access the network remotely. This could be a cell phone or perhaps a remote worker. Speaking of remote workers, how do we keep our employees safe when they're not in the office? First, in looking at public Wi-Fi, we should never trust public Wi-Fi. If we unfortunately have to use it, we never want to process any sensitive information across public Wi-Fi. And if there are no other options and we unfortunately have to do that, we want to utilize a virtual private network or a VPN uh, to process any of that information. Keeping your employees safe at home is also a major concern. The best way to do that is ensure that your employees are following safe, sound practices, such as leaving nothing default on their internet router. Right? So this is going to include changing the network password, changing the, net, the network identification code, certainly using different forms of uh, Wi-Fi such as WPA2 versus WEP. You want to make sure any guests at home are also using a guest password to get onto that Wi-Fi and they're not allowed to have administrative access. Also, you want to utilize some type of firewall service on the device. So whether that's a software-based firewall or perhaps endpoint protection, but utilize something so you can see what's going on on your employee's network. That's going to bring us to safe cell phone use. While we generally feel safe on our cell phones because we're not using our work computers, cell phones are increasingly the method of, of attack that attackers want to go after. Right? This is because our guards are ten, tend to be dropped on our cell phones. As we look at how do we manage this, how do we manage all of these devices, you need to employ what's called mobile device management or MDM. Right? We also want to utilize a passcode on our phone so if somebody finds our phone, they're not able to get into it. You never want to utilize a public charger. Always use the charger that either came with your phone or you bought from a trusted source such as the cell phone company where you got your phone. You want to make sure that you keep all applications on your phone updated. This prevents attackers from being able to use outdated apps and the vulnerabilities that lie with them as a way to get to the other information on your phone. And lastly, you want to manage application permissions. If an app doesn't need access to uh, other applications on your phone, you want to make sure that you shut those other applications off and shut off their permission. That's going to bring us to password best practices. Length over complexity. An eight character password, even if we add in special characters and numbers, can be cracked in under a minute. We want to use at least a 16 character password for our traditional users and at least a 25 character password for our administrative users. 16 characters seems like a long password, but this allows us to not have regular resets or changing your password every 90 days. The longer the password, the longer we're able to have that password in play rather than shutting it off after a given amount of time. Lastly, let's talk about cybersecurity insurance. So what is a good coverage, what does a good policy look like? Well, it needs to cover our legal fees and expenses. It needs to cover customer notification, who's going to tell our customers and clients. It needs to cover restoring the personal identities of those that have been affected. 
It needs to cover uh, restoring compromised data, right? Ransomware is the number one attack right now, and we need to know how are we going to get out of this, and our insurance company needs to help us out with that. Lastly, it needs to cover repairing any systems that might have been damaged uh, during that attack. We've seen that cybersecurity insurance premiums are up 35% quarter over quarter. Now, that's if you're able to obtain cybersecurity insurance. Most companies now are asking for some type of independent testing before they'll actually book and bind your coverage. In this module, we discussed how you can protect your organization, whether that's through cybersecurity awareness training, through critical asset management, protecting your sensitive data, identity access management, remote device management, or having that strong insurance policy. And don't forget that prevention is far cheaper than the treatment. You are the number one thing that's gonna stop bad guys from getting into your network.